Hello everyone, I'm Rakhi Tanwar, Principal Analyst in Agriculture and Food Vertical at BIS Research. It is my honor to present to you today's webinar, Big Data, the Goldmine of Precision Agriculture. BIS Research has been tracking the agriculture and food market since many years now. While several smart farming technologies have been introduced over the years, Big Data has stood out strongly due to the combination of benefits it provides to the whole agricultural ecosystem and the value it adds to each stakeholder. For today's discussion, we have an esteemed panel of speakers. Our first guest speaker is Mr. Stefan, Senior Vice President, Digital Farming of Yara International. Hello Stefan. everyone. Stefan is responsible for scaling the global digital and precision agriculture business at Yara. Our second guest speaker is Mr. Maximilian, Head of Product Management at CNH Industrial. Hello. Max bring, brings decade of experience in precision agriculture solutions and is responsible for managing the AG Extend platform at CNH Industrial. Also, we have with us our host speaker, Shonali. Shonali is lead analyst, Agritech Vertical at BI Research. He holds profound experience in spearheading market intelligence studies on various agriculture technologies such as precision agriculture, Internet of Things, and farm management solutions, to name a few. I would like to thank all the panelists for their gracious presence. The agenda for today's discussion is outlined here. We will start by highlighting the key issues currently affecting the farming industry and understand the need for data-driven solutions for a sustainable future. We will also emphasize on the current challenges faced by farmers regarding data sharing and how agriculture companies are mitigating those concerns. In the next 40 minutes, we are all keen to learn from your experience about big data in agriculture. And towards the end of the discussion, I will open the panel to the audience for any questions. I would like to request everyone in the audience to kindly mute your phones during the webinar and type in the questions towards the end of the webinar. Any questions that we are, we are not able to answer today shall be reverted offline. Having said that, let me open this panel for discussion and invite thoughts from Shanali. Over to you, Shanali. Thank you, Rakhi, for such a thoughtful introduction. Firstly, I would like to begin with discussing the key issues that are currently impacting the agriculture sector. The major concern identified is the massive population growth, coupled with rapid urbanization worldwide. Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations projects that by 2050, the agriculture industry will need to produce 70% more food to feed the growing population. Factors such as climatic changes and decline in agricultural labor also present daunting challenges for the global farming industry. Moreover, concerns such as over-irrigation, over-fertilization, and decreasing arable land are further aggravating the problem of global food insecurity. To meet the ever-increasing food demand, agriculture industry has undergone a series of revolutions since the 1900s, which includes farm mechanization, green revolution, and genetic modification. However, the rise of digital agriculture is the most disruptive revolutions out of all and is characterized as Agriculture 4.0. Agriculture 4.0 combines information science with agricultural engineering, leading to the generation of enormous amounts of data from the farming process, such as weather patterns, cropping data, farm performance data, and seed databases. The collection of large and complex data sets is known as big data. With the rising penetration of smart machines on the farms, farming processes will become increasingly data enabled, resulting into unique decision-making capabilities. Data-driven farming solutions are focused on helping farmers to close the supply demand gap by ensuring high yield, increased profits, and protection of the environment. So, uh, Stefan, uh, let's hear it from you now in detail, the factors that are propelling the digitization of agriculture, 
and the key opportunities that big data has to offer for the farming sector. Thank you very much. And uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, if we look at the space of digital farming, digital agriculture, it goes back 20 years. And uh, as many technology disruptive uh, developments, it had a very flat curve at the beginning. In Yara, we had uh, 20 years ago already the first experiments with sensors and, and how to optimize crops. And we have seen good successes and first important steps uh, over the past years. But honestly, I'm truly excited and I believe disruptive things will happen in the next three to five years. Somebody said once that it's not an ordinary disruption uh, that we're gonna see. And uh, I think that is actually quite true. Why is that so? Because many different factors come together, each of them disruptive on their own, but now all of them come together at the same time with a very steep S-curve. And we now see actually the beginning of this steep S-curve. So if we look three to five years forward, I think we're gonna see a, a dramatic shift in what is possible in terms of optimizing the food uh, supply that we have uh, on this planet. Let me just talk you through some of these factors that come together. The first one is data. Today, so much data can be made available. It's through what we're gonna hear, sensors and IoT in the field, it's through remote sensing, it's through all the knowledge that exists in so many places. So we have so much more available data and information about almost increments of the field sort of in a very, very granular way. That in itself is fantastic. But if we just dump, dump terabytes of data on a farmer, we don't make their life actually easier. We make their life maybe even harder. So what is critical is that we're able to make sense of terabytes of data every day. And here, the next disruptive development is coming in, which is all the area of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data analytics, which allow us to convert this, this tsunami, you could almost say, of data into very precise, practical insights, which the farmer or the agronomist, or whoever in the value chain can actually act upon. Now that's all good. We imagine we have a 2000 hectare field somewhere in Latin America. We know by five by five or 10 by 10 meters exactly what we should do, but that wouldn't help us if we couldn't execute on that granularity. And that is the next fascinating development. And I think we're gonna hear more about this uh, as we talk uh, over the next uh, half an hour, which is the execution in the field through precision implements, through precision equipment, through the ability to connect the insights from the data with the execution in the field in an automated way, we have the possibility to act upon all the great insights and make it a reality in the field. Now, the next step is how can we reach farmers? There are 500 million or more farmers in the world. And what is fascinating as well, so many farmers have access now. They can be connected to the knowledge that is available and we can connect with those farmers and we can bring all these good uh, technologies, insights and improvements to them. And then finally, we see a significant shift in the awareness of food. And it's not just enough to have enough food in many geographies, in several of this is still a very big issue, but. Very many people also want to know, what is it that I'm eating? How was it produced? Have the labor conditions been good? Has it been environmentally done in a good way? And this sustainability imperative is growing exponentially as is the technology. And if we take all these factors together, it is very, very exciting. And it is also gonna drive a significant change. So over the next three to five years, I think we will see in this space from sort of first good successes to a real impact at scale. If you go to the next slide, what we will see, next slide please, yeah, is all these insights, the ability to be precise, the smarter choices for the farmer and the connectivity will unlock a holistic opportunity for improvement. And that covers different dimensions. It covers yield, it covers quality, it covers waste, and thereby the environmental uh, dimension, and it covers value. And if you look at the farmers and the communities around farmers, it covers wealth of the individual. Let's talk about yield. In yield, imagine 
we could actually tailor, for example, for Yara crop nutrition solutions exactly to what is needed on the field. We could address all the shortcomings in the nutrients that exist exactly on this field and thereby unlock significant growth potential for the crop. And we can do that in increments of the field so that we find out exactly how the soil and the, the plant interact and what is exactly the need uh, for the plant at that uh, stage and how does the weather impact all this. The next is quality. Imagine we could put exactly the right amount of inputs. For example, again, crop nutrition is fascinating. And let's take the example of cereals, wheat. Uh, one important element is protein. In some applications, you want high protein content. In some applications, you want low protein content. What we can do is with having a tailored field specific uh, solution and using all the knowledge and the insights that we have, we can lift the quality significantly. Let's take taste. There's so many uh, areas where the right uh, program of, of agronomy can drive quality up. Coffee is an example. Others are an example. And then we need to do all this if we look at the environmental component to make more with less. So how can we reduce the environmental footprint in doing all of this? And in Yara, as an example, we have shown in uh, North America through a solution we call Adapt-N that we can if we apply exactly the right amount of nutrient at the right time for the field, depending on the, right, on the weather conditions that apply, we can reduce the loss of nitrogen, so the loss of fertilizer, by 35 to 40%, up to 35 to 40%. That means a significant benefit for the environment, a significant benefit also for the farmer, and a much more sustainable um, uh, supply of our food. Now, all of this is not sustainable if we cannot create value. And the value is the enabler also for the innovation. If we had an, an industry where there is no value creation, we will not be able to sustainably fund the innovation. And then we'll also not be able to make all the difference to the food and farming system that we all aim and dream of uh, to realize. And that again, it starts with creating wealth, creating value at the farm, but it also expands beyond the farm. We want to create value across and then all the players and the farmers and the end consumers will get more can get more with less environmental impact uh, with the food uh, that they get what it also means is this is an opportunity for companies to come together as we will talk later because many of these elements can be realized when different companies actually work together so it's not an ordinary disruption as somebody said it is really the opportunity to apply these fast growing disruptive technologies to really sustainably and holistically transform food supply and give us all the opportunity to do something good for the one planet we have while sort of also making a difference for farmers and the entire value chain. Over to you again. Thank you, Stefan, for the interesting insights. Uh, so currently there exists a wide gamut of precision agricultural equipment and digital tools that enable farm data to be collected. Max, uh, why don't you inform us about uh, where the data is coming from and how is it made accessible to the farmers? Okay, so let's talk about where is all this data coming from, where Stefan was already referring to what we could do with it. Um, Let's start away from data capturing through storage, transfer, and analytics. So the big data backbone, and this is really important to know, and this is the basis, is the high quality data set of different sensors, um, satellite imagery, um, certain open data, whatever UAV or um, drone sensor data, as well as other sensing technologies. Um, at the end of the day, there is a huge mass of sensors out there, and for sure, um, farmers are testing a lot. We are right now seeing that um, with a not highly qualified data set, we are more and more getting into troubles than getting into values. So this is really important in step number one to make sure that we are having a high quality data set coming from all those different sources. 
Um, which is bringing me to the data storage piece. And the data storage piece is great. Um, I think we are in the best time of um, yeah, getting sensors connected and uh, moving into latest technologies with cloud-based or hybrid storage systems, um, even going for HDFS systems. But guys, let's be honest. 90% of all the data is still somewhere on a USB drive. And um, there, I think it's a huge transformation needed in order to run more cloud-based um, data. And um, this is for sure something which is bringing us into how to transfer data. And transfer data is, let's say, a very wide area where farmers are getting for sure lost, where we as technology guys are getting into um, basic discussions about which technology for which application. And even uh, we have seen it right now in Europe where in some countries the 5G licenses were right now on the market. And uh, at the end of the day, is the agriculture area really connected? That's a good question. And uh, we are experiencing country by country, region by region, that uh, we still have 0G areas. And in those, um, I think, latest technologies like LoRa, Sigfox, there are others coming up at the moment, um, as well um, the Bluetooth um, in low uh, or in, in small areas, in low range areas, and as well then looking into all the 2 to 5G um, um, coverage uh, and um, let's say license bands. So there is a huge opportunity out there, but it's also really important to make sure that we are having a certain consistency, but also a safety in getting data into our storage, which then enables us to go into data analytics. And data analytics, I think, is the best time of what we have at the moment. When we solve the first challenges of one, two, and three, um, we, at the end, we are bringing the real value to the farm. And I think this is really what also Stefan was just mentioning. We are at the time where we can really bring value to the farmer, and as soon as we bring value, there is um, a cost, there's a price for it, and this is then for sure bringing technology forward. And at the end of the day, the farmer wants to have this, all these data transferred into information. And transferring into information is bringing me to the next slide. So let's face it. Data needs to be accessible for the farmer. We can spend hours speaking about digital clouds, open platforms, APIs, and so on. It's great, and there is a huge potential. But at the end of the day, the success of big data at farm level depends on the accessibility to the user. And uh, we at CNH Industrial see two main categories for the farmer. Um, one is the onboard, meaning integrated into the machines the farmer is operating his farm with, meaning um, machine and implement data, um, operations, optimization focus, meaning at the end of the day, when I'm in a machine like a combine, which information do I really need to optimize my uh, operation? There is for sure certain standards, which obvious ISOBUS is um, a global one now, and uh, the user interface is very standard, which is needed. But also this is bringing us to restrictions and limitations in user interface and as well into the quantity of information the user can really absorb and can really then use. So on board, there is um, the accessibility, but also there we see um, more and more automation. But I think the big one is off board. Off board, we see tools like FMIS uh, systems with unlimited data availability um, with a clear planning or let's say a review focus. So we are looking at what happened or even more than planning what needs to be done. We are combining data sets and uh, we are cross-referencing data sets. And uh, at the end of the day, the cloud storage um, is really limiting um, or it's not limiting the processing power, which was, let's say, until three to four years still a big question mark. Can we really run all those application maps? 
And at the end of the day, the user interface, which is for sure a core topic for the accessibility for the farmer, um, is nearly unlimited. Be it an app, be it a web platform, be it in whatever shape uh, we want to display information or data to the farmer and make the farmer becoming the owner and user of the data. I think this is where Offboard is bringing us to um, the next big thing. And this is bringing me to my slide number 10. And here just a short um, introduction of what CNHI is right now talking about big data. Big data is enabling the next level of precision farming. We are talking about precision farming since 1995. I think this is where we started the first yield maps on some of our combines, which is great. But at the end of the day, what we really failed with was getting the data to the right point in order to make a value out of it. So right now, open connectivity empowers our customers to leverage data, agronomy, and technology to make the best decisions. We get everything into one place in order to make the best decisions. Um, Strategic partnerships with data platforms um, extends planning, analysis, execution, and agronomic information. is bringing at the end of the day the real customer value. And obvious, also we are working intensively on the next generation digital platform within our machines um, to have superior and interactive onboard connectivity within all our machines and across all platforms, which is at the end of the day um, the core um, to have the full digitalization and the full big data access um, through the machines in the field. And at the end of the day, this is bringing me to the slide number 11. And uh, one of the brands, and let's face it, um, this is where I'm personally strongly involved to drive the innovation roadmap is AgExtend. AgExtend is an open innovation platform uh, to pro provide access to the customers and empower the customers to leverage data um, and as well best-in-class technologies for all, for all farming applications. Meaning, we are looking at the core segments of farming from uh, plants and crops, environment, implement, machine sensing, as well as soil. And uh, we are looking for the best technologies out there in order to um, support locally the farmers in um, yeah, implementing latest technologies. Because it's really easy to say it on PowerPoint and as well sold on web shops um, to get farmers access to technology. But what happens if something is not working? Is the farmer okay with a web shop, uh, with a um, let's say, online support through a chatbot? Or is the farmer more and more looking into really on-site support, maybe through his, let's say, certified machinery dealer or even through his agronomy company? At the end of the day, we need to make sure that we are supporting our dealers as CNHI to provide more complex precision farming solutions in the field and locally to the customer. And for sure, we are guiding our dealers to be ahead of other key players in their region uh, on the adoption of new technologies, because it's obvious, and it was already said at the start, the next three to five years will make a big difference within the agriculture um, environment. And there it's obvious that more and more tools will help the dealers to become key players in their region. And, uh, Therefore, CNH Ag Extend is uh, one of the tools we are using at the moment and we are implementing to grow this business. And um, yeah, this is where we are at the moment for technology and uh, all the different um, segments we are covering. There is one core, um, let's say, basis. The basis is we want to have the best in class partners, uh, partner companies in order to provide the best technologies in the field. We are not doing this in-house. We are keeping this as an open platform, meaning that there are more and more players coming into the game. We are running the platform 
and uh, we are partnering up with quite some amazing companies, with startups, with existing um, over years, uh, let's say, strong technology uh, partners out there in the field. And uh, even more, I think it's more and more becoming important that we are adapting to local needs. So there is not a global egg extend uh, portfolio. Um, some of the pieces will be rolled out globally, but I can tell you, um, talking between Latin America, um, Japan, and as well here Central Europe, we are finding quite some same requirements, but also quite some differences. And therefore, Egg Extend is staying the open platform, ready for hosting and partnering up with startups and technology companies from everywhere around this world to provide access to the farmers and as well the support to the farmers because as I just said, this is where we see the difference. Um, there is not a web shop to support the farmer when something is not working. And this is bringing me to my next slide then and uh, thanks back to Sonali. Thank you, Max. Um, while the benefits of big data in agriculture are quite convincing, there are certain significant challenges restraining wide-scale adoption. At present, uh, the barriers to realizing the complete potential of data-driven farming include a lack of legal and regulatory framework. And also, there are certain concerns over data privacy and security. Majorly, farmers are worried that their proprietary data could potentially fall into the wrong hands and can be used against them. Furthermore, various ethical apprehensions have been raised about data ownership and changes to farming practices. Presently, farmers feel that they bear too much of the risk and do not benefit from big data. However, if farmers are made to understand how sharing data can provide real value to them, they are bound to find the solutions attractive. Agribusinesses across the globe are coming up with solutions to build a trusting relationship with the farmers and make them realize the value of data. Over the last few years, technology providers have introduced several software license agreements that govern farm data collection, management, and sharing. Moreover, several neutral data sharing aggregators are also formed that could pool the data from farms and share it in a secure, private manner that benefits all the six stakeholders. For instance, AG Gateway and Agricultural Data Coalition are some of the key third parties that help farmers better manage their data and promote innovation by creating uh, independent farmer-centric data repository. On this note, I would like to invite insights from Max and Stefan to specifically understand how agriculture companies are addressing farmers' concerns over different data-driven solutions. Max, why don't we hear from you first? Okay. Um, how we in Ag Extend are addressing the concerns is really depending on the application. But um, I have brought two strong examples of uh, fundamental beliefs we are sharing within our company and uh, we are having as our DNA. First of all, the customer is the owner of the data. This is the key to transform data into information. And uh, at the end of the day, the data needs to be transformed into information, into, let's say, support tools. Support tools meaning in order to start the value chain, we need to make sure that the customer is understanding the data, uh, which needs to be somehow, let's say, displayed in a certain way. Um, and the flow of data needs to be in the hand of the customer. So this is bringing me to the point. The customer is making the decision of where he wants to have his data. So we take this example you see here on slide 14. So we have those environmental sensors, be it whatever. Let's take a rain sensor. The rain sensor is a simple sensor which is just measuring how much rain is falling at a certain time period, in which area. That's it. Um, this data can be now or is now sent into the cloud. If the farmer doesn't want to have it in the cloud, for sure we find different solutions and we offer this solution, but we need to make sure that the farmer is understanding that 
the data generated from the environmental sensors is just a single data set. There is nothing which is really bringing value to it. If we are then putting it into our cloud with the intelligent algorithms and transform the data into information, like, for example, weather forecasts, we match it with different sensors, with open information, um, then the customer is getting really decision support tools instead of just having a data set. And um, this is really important that the customer is understanding at the end of the day that sharing data, at this point it's an information, it's a data set, is bringing additional values to him. In this case, we are offering forecasts, we are offering disease pressure models, we are even offering for certain crops um, spray planning uh, solutions. So this is really important that, um, number one, customer is owning the data, and he is, needs to see that there is value by sharing a certain set of information. So which is bringing me to my secondly, to my next level and to my next slide. Um, and this is, let's say, a very personal one. I believe um, this is why we all in AgTech and I would say my team and all the people today joining this call and even all the guys out there in the field are standing up every morning. If we improve the customer's business significantly with data and transparent cloud data processing, the concerns mentioned above are becoming less and less important. They are still there, um, but they are becoming less and less important as we are bringing significant improvements. And let's talk about the basis of farming, which is the soil. And um, the actual process of soil analysis is shown here on the right side, meaning um, we are going through a very strong process from collecting soil samples in the field, sending them, doing the analysis, getting the data back, and then somehow transforming them into information and applications and then spreading again or going into the field running an application. Um, even if we are taking this process as it is, we made significant uh, investigations. We sent one single soil sample to eight different uh, soil laboratories and we got nine different um, uh, results, um, let's say. At this point, the question is, we are saying everything is based on the soil analysis, but we are not getting to the point where we can really get those data into the point where we're saying, okay, we can trust this data. And this is what I was saying at the beginning. If the data is not trustable, because if we send one soil sample into several um, um, soil laboratories, and at the end of the day, the, the results are not even matching, so this is bringing us to the point, this needs to be completely changed. And we believe data-driven solutions will disrupt um, the agriculture segment. And this will only work if we are improving the farmer's business in terms of operational cost and for sure, for sure productivity. And um, I believe in soil sampling and soil sensing, there is a huge opportunity, which is not yet solved. Um, we are seeing a lot of startups coming up on that one, and uh, we are intensively working on this. And uh, I believe this is the core of farming. And if we are solving this, also here, farmers will immediately start to share certain level of data if they can overcome those, um, let's say, data sets they are getting today as well, let's say, the timing it needs for soil sampling and as well, if the accuracy of the data set is even better than what we see today, I think then there is a clear message to the industry and to all the startups out there and all the technology companies out there. We need to bring solutions which are adding the value to the farmer. And then the farmer is obviously willing to share the data and is for sure not anymore, let's say, this concerned about misuse of the data if he's having a clear benefit out of it. And um, yeah, this is bringing me really to my last point. And uh, I think one of the starting points was yield and quality uh, centers and uh, uh, measurements. Um, just the last point on this one, also here, 
I tell you, we, are, we have seen thousands of hectares of field maps, and uh, we can be very clear on that one, that if a not well calibrated yield sensor is in the field, the data is really, really not usable. And uh, we are seeing a lot of data sets where it's great to have the data, but if we are looking at the quality, this needs to be really, really made clear that uh, one thing is the mass of data, the big data, but the other thing is the quality. And uh, this is bringing me then from my last slide back to uh, Stefan from Yara. Thank you. And I think a very different, uh, maybe less technical uh, topic is the question of the human element. Uh, and uh, if you look into the world of farming, 80% <clears throat> actually are smallholder farmers in terms of productivity. And this means this is hundreds of millions of smallholder farmers. In our area, most of or many of the people that joined uh, to embark on this with, with us, they want to make a difference. And in this area, it's about making a difference where it matters the most. If you imagine, this is actually real farmers from uh, our uh, user research in India. If you have those farmers, imagine that the outcome that they get on the farm can determine whether their children can go to school or can get an even better education, determine the standard of life. And it's really about sort of making a difference where it matters the most. What is important is uh, that the starting point has to be a couple of factors. Number one, we need to make a real difference for those farmers. There is a concern, will smallholder farmers be able to afford the technologies? I think if we develop technology that is not affordable to users, it's worth nothing. So the starting point has to be, how do we make it affordable? And we make it affordable if we create a value. If we create a value for the smallholder farmer, or we, if we create a value somewhere else that is so big that somebody will actually pay for the smallholder farmer and enable this technology. The second one is, is it actually possible to make a difference? And I was super excited when I looked into what is possible. For example, in Yara, we have shown in thousands of times that we can up to double the yield of smallholder farmers if we help the smallholder farmer really sort of throughout the season. But that's not enough. What is a thousand farmers if you have a challenge of hundreds of millions? And here is where technology comes in. Here is where we can scale the impact that we can bring through the use of technology and connect the farmer to the ability to make a real difference. <clears throat> and this is also another point. We need to bring this together because one company alone will not make a difference as we'll explore uh, a little bit later. And I think th these factors together can allow us to make a real difference for smaller farmers. Somebody said at some point that the agricultural opportunity that we have with digital technology is actually an income revolution in the smallholder world. And I think this is a very good picture and a good motivation to overcome all the constraints that exist in the smallholder farm. If you then move forward to the next slide, and if we look at adoption, uh, I've, I've been in some areas in discussions, well, what would it take to drive adoption. And some people say, well, regulation and maybe something else and whatever. If you're very honest, I think the, the biggest barrier to adoption is that those who have been working in the ag tech space, and I include everyone in this, have just simply not done a good enough job. If you look at farmers today, there is several issues. And I think if you look at the issue, it educates us a lot of what we should actually do. And one of the solutions, and at the same time, the lack thereof is the issue is, is sort of the farmer at the center. Very often, companies provide information to farmers that they think is important for their business. But it's key to start with the farmer. What do the farmers need? What do the advisors need? What do other value chain players need? What is the problem we are solving? And putting that at the center. We should not expect the farmer to become a computer scientist. So we cannot... We need to make things easy. We need to make things practical. We need to make things viable. A farmer has to do a thousand tasks. We need to make that one task that we want to help super easy, super relevant, and super practical. 
Another one is real benefits. There has been an analysis by a consortium of universities that looked at do actually digital solutions work? And they tested, I don't know how many, and I think except for one or two or three, all of them had issues. They didn't actually reliably work. We, we were very happy to see that ours was on the, on the good ones, but that doesn't help the industry as such that causes issues and those issues are in the way of adoption. So what does it mean for us? We need to make sure that what we launch, what is brought to the farmer actually really works. And that goes to trust. Let's go back to the two farmers, the two smallholder farmers in our mind. And let's think about this family. Let's think about the fact that the farm outcome actually determines whether this family will have a good year or whether it's not good, a good year. Would you bet your family on a tool that you don't know? Would you bet on that? Or would you rather say, let's wait and see? So what we have to do is we need to win the trust of farmers. That needs to be at the forefront of the activities that uh, we do. And another issue is working together. Today, farmers have a choice of, I would say globally, a thousand digital tools. Well, uh, we, we are asked as an industry to find ways how our approaches can talk together. And if I take the example uh, of, of yield that I was talking about at the beginning, imagine we can supply exactly the right seed to the right soil in the right density. Imagine that seed potential can be realized by putting actually the right amount and the right type of crop nutrition to overcome all the deficiencies. Imagine that is all again protected with exactly the right but the minimum amount of, of chemistry that is actually needed and imagine that with a company like Case New Holland there is an opportunity to make that executable in a very good way. Imagine what can be different and I think those <clears throat> models they will bring the disruptive power that I was talking about at the beginning. If we look at different regions, these regions have very different starting points. If we take North America, of course, there has been an earlier adoption on some of the technologies than maybe in other geographies, like in certain parts of Europe, or obviously then also in, in Asia or in Africa. But I'm fundamentally convinced that the main is not to speculate what is the adoption curve. The main benefit and the thing that we need to do as of Monday or as of tomorrow, as we work together, is to make sure that we address the issues why the adoption has actually not been there. We do our best, we do a best possible job to make that difference. And I think if that difference can be made, then I think also adoption will come. And then I think we can live the dream that we all have of, of, of supply better food to the end customer, have more thriving, more wealthy farming communities, and to have a real difference to how we feed the world and maybe at the same time protect the, the planet. With that, back to you, Sonali, and uh, looking forward to some discussion and some questions. Great. Thank you, Stefan, for telling us about the key fundamentals that are essential in increasing the current pace of adoption. Over to you, Rakhi. Thank you, Sonali. We have now established how big data is radically changing the agriculture industry by outlining the key opportunities it presents for a holistic improvement of farmers. However, this transition from traditional farming practices to data-enabled solutions has resulted in some concerns regarding privacy, ownership, and security. Agriculture industry players are constantly innovating their solutions to shift farmers' focus from the potential risk to potential opportunities. Big data also has the capability to significantly improve the lives of millions of smallholder farmers worldwide by helping them make informed decisions. The present benefits offered by big data surely outweigh the few downsides. In the future, big data is going to be a game changer in creating a more productive, cost-effective, and flexible agricultural value chain. With that thought, let me now declare the forum open for any questions from the listeners. I request the listeners to kindly type in the questions on the Q&A box available on the bottom of your screen. And I'll be happy to pass the questions to our esteemed speakers. Okay, so Stefan, first question is uh, for you here. What is yeah. Yaka's approach on extending big data to smallholder farmers of Africa? 
I think if you want to make a fundamental difference uh, to, to the food system, the smallholder farmer is, needs to be key in, in what you want to achieve. And, and for that reason, in digital farming, we have actually a sizable, very, very big dedicated effort on smallholder farmers. Uh, we, because it's not enough to take technology that works, say, in the U.S. and then say, well, with a bit of luck, it will actually fit in Kenya uh, to a uh, farmer there. So <clears throat> our approach is to first put strategic emphasis on it. And that is driven by the mission of the company, which is to responsibly feed the world and protect the planet. So, so we have to <clears throat> be obliged to focus on smallholder farms. Second, uh, we believe there is a significant difference to be made. We can actually really, I mean, the, the, the promise that smallholder farming brings is significant. It's not easy. Um, so the the next question here we have is for you, Max. Uh, will the subscription model take over the precision agriculture technologies? Uh, will companies offer expand their products as service in the future to improve affordability? Oh, very advanced question. I think basically yes. This will be one of the the, the let's say trends we will see. But still, we are seeing a strong demand from farmers to own uh, technologies, to own sensors. Um, the more we're getting into data processing, I think subscription models will be um, one of the, of the solutions. And um, the second question, if companies will expand their products as a service, um, definitely yes. Um, we need to get to the point of having uh, a better affordability uh, right now in times of, uh, let's say, even sharing technologies uh, globally where seasons are different. Um, some sensors could be shipped uh, within 48 hours from one continent to the other. Um, so I believe, yes, there will be a completely different approach possible, but still the existing business and the existing ownership uh, model we have today is still, um, let's say, valid and will be valid, but obvious uh, yeah, product as a service will be one of the drivers of the future. Thank you, Max. It was really insightful. Um, uh, Stefan, are you there with I'm, us? I'm back. I'm back. Sorry, I was kicked out for some reason. I'm, I'm back. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, yeah, uh, there's again a question for you here, Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, will agricultural robots disrupt your current product offerings and business model? Yes. The short answer is yes. Uh, it has to, uh, because one of the things uh, we realize, we, we need to build business models for the future. And uh, we want that because we believe the new opportunities need to be reflected in a different way of doing business. And I, I give a couple of examples. I think one example is that as we go for more personalized crop nutrition, as we talk about it, that will open the door for a different way of, of offering, a more integrated offering. Uh, it will open the door for working together with other companies and offering solutions together. And it offers also the opportunity, what we call to multiply our opportunity because digital technology allows us to operate in areas which otherwise we would not be able uh, to make a difference for farmers in the, in the traditional business. So absolutely, we believe it will be disruptive. And the way we are organized is also, we are organized as a business. We, we're not organized as a technology function. We're organized to build a business and at the same time make a difference. So I clearly see that we have different ways how we want to do this. And I'm, I'm very sure this is gonna make a big impact on, on the company. Okay, great, fun, great. So uh, Max, um, there's another question for you. Yeah, so the question is, 
how do you foresee artificial intelligence coming together with big data in propagating precision agriculture in the future i think it's one of the one of the core um, technologies behind this there's um, yeah we could go into a one hour discussion now but uh, obvious the topic is clear there is um, yeah artificial intelligence will change the way how 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 data is becoming information and the information for the farmer will be uh, more valuable but also let's say more powerful and uh, this is where i believe ai will make the difference okay that's that's great okay um so i have, I have another question here for you stefan Mm -hmm. European countries present the highest scope of adoption for such advanced solutions, and is there a difference between Western Europe and Eastern Europe? Uh, there, there are definitely differences. I think uh, let's start again in a farmer-centric way with the type of farm we have. I think uh, farms in Eastern Europe have different characteristics in terms of size, in terms of professionalization uh, than they have in uh, Western Europe. Uh, the second is that uh, uh, I think it is uh, at the moment, if you look at it, still a difference uh, in the adoption. Um, personally, I think uh, while the agronomy, uh, the fundamental agronomy uh, will in many areas actually not be so different, uh, the way actually to make a difference, to make it tailored to the farmer, but also the way you engage with players, it's, it's very different players that need to come together to make a difference in Eastern Europe than it is in, in Western Europe. I think this will need to um, have a very tailored approach. And uh, for Yara, for example, uh, there, there is also business model consequence to go back to the question we had before. Uh, we, we, we have a different uh, traditional business footprint in Western and in Eastern Europe. So we need to be creative how we find new business models, how we can make a difference and, and how we can harvest the benefits for farmers uh, that we want to. So I, I definitely see a difference. I, I don't see fundamentally that, that it, things can only work in the one or the other area. But I think what it will take is a different approach, a tailored farmer-centric approach and different partners to work with us uh, to make a difference. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I, think, I think we can take one more question that is for Max. So are you providing any training services to the farmers for better guidance of digital solutions? So our precision farming road started, as I said, 25 years ago. Um, we as a ma manufacturer of machines are for sure driven by the fact of training our customers. Um, in 2011, 2012, I had the opportunity to take over and develop a training organization for Europe, Middle East, Africa, which is focused on um, customer service. And in this team, we have uh, quite a number of trainers, which are only training customers locally, on-site, online, on their uh, latest technologies, which we started with guidance systems, um, application maps, and uh, run certain controllers and up to telematics. Obvious, we are using those tools and uh, those teams and we are staffing this team right now intensively. Um, again, to the point that these technologies need to be well educated because this is coming back to the point that um, having the best technology in the field will not help us if we are not training the, the, the operators on how to use it best. So yes, for CNHI, this is one of the core pillars next to product quality, price, and uh, technology readiness um, about the supportive uh, functionality and uh, how we support this product and solution. I think this is core. And uh, yeah, we can do a lot on uh, videos and PowerPoints, but obvious at the end of the day, it's the strong training team we have uh, implemented and we will grow in the future in order to be on site and have on site training for um, the users and the customers. Thank you, Max.
um, unfortunately we have now run out of time and won't be able to take more questions um, in the end i would really like to thank stefan and max for joining us in this session and sharing their knowledge with us also thank you shanali for sharing your insights we have got an overwhelming response through registrations and questions with the help of stefan max and analyst at bis we would try to answer these questions and send it across through email with this i conclude today's seminar today's webinar thank you everyone and i wish you all a wonderful week ahead thank you very much have a good day thank you bye